Hey everyone, this is National Master Kostya Kavutsky here for chess.com, and today we're going to be covering how to play the Queen's Gambit Accepted. After the beginning moves d4, d5, and c4, the Queen's Gambit, Black now plays d takes c4, and this opening is known as the Queen's Gambit Accepted. After White plays e3, we immediately see the main point behind his opening. He wants to play bishop takes c4, and after he recaptures his pawn, he's going to be playing for having more space and better control in the center. Meanwhile, black should try to counterattack white center and ultimately strive for peace activity. First, let's take a look and see what happens if black plays b5, trying to hold on to his extra pawn. White should now play a4, immediately attacking black's pawn chain. We can quickly realize that black has no good way of holding on to both of these pawns. Moves like a6 fail because white will take on b5, and black cannot recapture because his rook on a8 is hanging. Similarly, a move like c6 also doesn't work, because white will take on b5, and if black recaptures, white will play queen f3, winning a lot of material. This means that black should simply not play b5 and try a move like knight f6, just starting his development and preparing to attack white center. After white recaptures the pawn, Black plays e6, white plays knight f3, and black plays c5, attacking white center. Now white castles, and black plays a6. The point behind a6 is to play b5, gaining space on the queen side and preparing to develop the bishop to b7, where it's going to be really active. Here white has two main options. The first option is to play a4. The good thing about a4 is that it stops black's idea of playing b5. The drawback is that it gives black full control over the b4 square. Now after black plays knight c6, knight c3, and bishop e7, black very shortly is going to capture on d4, and after white recaptures, he's going to have an isolated queen pawn. And now we're going to have pretty much normal play where one side has an isolated queen pawn. White is going to try to prove that this pawn is a strength, and try to activate his pieces with moves like knight e5, bishop g5, rook e1, and try to play either for the d4, d5 pawn break, or for an attack against black's king side. Meanwhile, black is going to try to blockade this pawn on d4, and the way he's going to do that is by maneuvering his c6 knight to the square d5, using the b4 square. After he does that, he's going to develop his light square bishop to d7 and then to c6, where he's going to continue to strengthen his control over the d5 square. If black can hold on to this blockade, he's going to have very good counterplay because white's d4 pawn is going to be very weak. If white wants to try a different approach, he should play bishop b3, allowing black to expand on the queen side with b5. Now after a4, attacking black's pawns, Black should push forward with b4, and now white has the option of playing e4, a very sharp and aggressive pawn sacrifice. If black accepts this pawn, white's going to play rook e1, and after black's knight retreats, white can play d5, and white has a very strong attack in the center against black's king. So this is not what black wants. Black should instead play c takes d4. After knight bd2, bishop b7, e5, and knight d7, we've reached a really complicated position. Black has an extra pawn on d4, but it's not so easy for white to recapture this pawn without losing his e5 pawn. White should try to play for the initiative. White should play moves like rook e1, knight c4, bishop g5, rook c1, and ultimately play against black's weaknesses in his own position. Meanwhile, black should play moves like knight c6, rook c8, queen c7, bishop b7, and castle kingside, and try to either win this e5 pawn or simply complete his development and gain counterplay in the center. Thanks a lot for listening. This is National Master Kostya Kavuski, and I'll see you around on chess.com.